Hi everyone, this is Ravi. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is our lesson 14 on Tricent is Tosca Automation Tool Concepts. In this lesson, I'm going to concentrate on the concepts like parent control, dynamic ID, and dynamic comparison. So I'm going to walk you through the real time example so that you can clearly understand how can we use parent control, dynamic ID and dynamic comparison in Tosca tool. Please subscribe to the channel and click on bell icon. You will receive notifications whenever I publish more videos on Tosca and other technologies. Thank you. Okay, so before I walk you through the real time example by using Tosca automation tool, let me cover some theoretical topics. So what is dynamic comparison? So by the end of this exercise, you will be able to set a dynamic comparison to exclude and to buffer a part of a string. So why is this important? So dynamic comparison allows you to verify a dynamic string by excluding the dynamic part with the additional option to buffer the excluded value. So this helps verify strings with dynamic elements as well as use the buffered elements. So let me tell you a quick uh, example here. Okay. So everyone knows about the Gmail and then once you log into Gmail, there is an option called inbox, which shows you how many emails have been received to your inbox, which you have to read. Correct. So basically it shows this text with inbox and closed brackets with the number of emails that you have received. So in this concept, the number of emails that keeps changing. Correct. But the inbox is a static text and the number is a dynamic text. So in this case, you basically when you are comparing, comparing the inbox along with the numbers, you can exclude the number part and then you can store that number part into a buffer value. So this helps verify strings with dynamic elements as well as you use buffered elements. OK, so our second agenda item and our third agenda item is parent control and dynamic ID. So what is the objective? So by end of this exercise, you will be able to use XCAN to create a module with controls that have been identified by a parent as well as use XCAN to create a module with a dynamic ID. So why is this important? If the system under test, that means your application, what you are trying to automate, if that application has dynamic information, so you have to use additional methods to fully automate. For example, so when are we going to use the parent control? Let's say in your system under test, you are trying to identify an object, okay, which is not uniquely identified by its own property. Then we are going to use the parent control, basically the parent control property so that the object can be uniquely identified. What about dynamic ID? So in case of dynamic comparison, right? If you your object in the system under test is a dynamic object, that means the property of that particular objects keep changing, then you cannot use the static ID. You have to go for the dynamic ID. OK, so let me walk you through the real time examples by using Tosca tool so that you can understand all these three concepts, dynamic comparison, parent control and dynamic ID. OK, stay tuned. OK, so now let me walk you through the real time example by using Tosca tool. OK, so before I go to my Tosca tool, let me explain the scenario. Uh, what is our first agenda item is it's a dynamic comparison. Okay, so here this is our demo web shop. Uh, I have already told uh, about this demo web shop in my previous videos. So I would I would really highly recommend you people 
to go through my previous uh, YouTube videos, almost like 13 YouTube videos. So before you start watching this 14th video, okay? So here, so once you complete ordering successfully, so what we were doing in earlier uh, sessions, we have validated this uh, thank you message and then your order has been successfully processed. So, but now, so if I want to uh, basically uh, compare or to verify the order number message as well, then how can I handle this? So in this case, this order number and colon, this entire text is static, whereas this order number is a dynamic because this order number keeps on changing whenever you perform a new order, correct? So in this case, what I would like to do is, I would like to verify this entire text by excluding this dynamic part and also I would like to store this number for my future use. Okay, how can we do that? So let me go back to Tosca. So this is my Tosca. So let me create a new folder called a test case 4. Okay, so this is our test case 4. Okay, and then let me copy previous session. Okay, this is our previous session. Let me copy this and then let me paste this previous session into this new folder. Okay, and then we have to rename this one. Okay, let me rename this to 14th session, right? 14 dynamic comparison. Okay, this is our dynamic comparison. And here, so let me, so as soon as what we are doing here, uh, as per our previous session, so what we are doing, once you check out, we are verifying the prices and then I'm actually verifying the confirmation and then I'm verifying the success, right? That means where I'm verifying the success message. So after that, I would like to add another step here, okay? So just... Uh, basically right click on this so once again so let me add a new folder here okay right click create a new folder name this as order successful or basically we can do one thing okay buffer the order number okay name this as buffer the order number so just you can uh, arrange this in a chronological order, okay? So once you verify the success message, I would like to verify this as well as I would like to buffer the dynamic part, okay? I would like to verify this entire text by excluding the dynamic part and then by storing this dynamic part into a buffer. Basically, I would like to store this order number into a buffer so that I can reuse that buffer in the future use, okay? So how can we do that? So here, come back to your test step and I would like to add a test step, okay? Search, you have to select search and add test step. Here, order successful. Basically, I would like to add a module called order successful. And then, if you see here, you have to provide a value here for the order number, right? So let me select inner text. My inner text is what? So if you see here, just copy this entire text until colon as it is. Okay. My inner text equal to order number space open curly braces XB. So this XP represents dynamic expression. Okay, dynamic comparison. For dynamic comparison, you have to use XB. That means we are excluding. So I'm going to compare this. I'm going to verify this entire string, but I would like to exclude order number. So let me just explain clearly. Okay, so here what I'm doing, I'm verifying this order number message until colon space and then 
I am excluding the rest of the order number text and also I am excluding but also I am storing that into a variable called order number or I am storing that into a buffer called order number. Okay and then click enter. So as soon as you click enter, so it shows you see what I am doing. I have to change this action mode as verify and if you see here what I am doing I am verifying the inner text of this object from order number till colon and then I am excluding this part but I am storing that order number part into a buffer called order number okay so that is done. So now let me execute this entire test case now. So pre, I mean, see, have you reused the same test case whatever we executed in session 13? Please refer that session session 13. And now I have I, I included an additional step for buffering the order and to verify the dynamic portion. Correct. So now let me run this particular order okay so let me run this test case so for this you just need to right click and then click on run in scratch book so let's okay let me close this one okay before i run this open let's go on the login and then sorry let me again let me do one more thing sorry i think I, we forgot one thing here okay so I have provided invalid. If you remember, my in my previous session, we have used the invalid credentials, correct? So let me change those invalid credentials to valid credentials, okay? Okay, so now, so let me again run this session, okay? Right click, run in scratch book. Before running, I would like to close the browser. Okay. Right click, run in scratch book. So what it should do, it should open a new browser. Login. And then add jeans to the cart. And then check out. Right. So once the order is successfully placed, it should actually buffer the order. Correct. So let me go and show you the results. Okay. So confirm. So once you click on confirm, now it is going to store this order number. Okay. Let's go back to the test results. Okay. So if you see here, so verify uh, prices is failed because we have added almost like 50 orders. Okay. But the main concentration part here is your order successful. If you see here, your order number that order number colon order right it has compared the verification basically verification was successful expected is order number colon and we have excluded this and then the excluded part is order number and then order number is this okay basically actually is this so it compared till this part and rest of this part has been buffered into a variable okay so let me show you so this comparison is successful but where does this order number stored okay let me go to projects go to settings if you go to settings and then if you click on engine if you see here buffer so these are all the buffer values okay if you see here the order see basically the order number 81 6723 has been stored under a variable or under a buffer called order number whatever we specified in this particular let me close this if you see here this order number buffer we have used in this step correct so that order number has been stored into this buffer so that means we have verified a dynamic message but while verifying the dynamic text 
we have excluded the dynamic portion and that dynamic portion of order number has been stored into a buffer called order number. So we are going to use this order number dynamic portion in future in the next agenda item where we are going to I am going to explain you on parent control and the dynamic ID. Okay, so I am going to cover this in next immediate YouTube session because I have a, a short timeline here. So I am not able to cover those two topics in this particular video session. I am going to post another session to cover two more agenda items, parent control and the dynamic ID. So please subscribe to my channel, click on bell icon, so you will receive more videos and then you will receive a notifications whenever I publish more concepts. Thank you.